Uh, my work is primarily in the uh, security conflict domain, more so than the development uh, uh, domain, but, uh, but I, I think there are some interesting, uh, obviously, uh, meeting points, and especially with, with the topic of this, uh, this conference, um, some, some obvious ones. Um, I've been uh, asked uh, to, to speak, to, to, I'm going to try to do three things, uh, which is never a good idea when you're doing a presentation, but I'll, I'll keep uh, most focus on the middle part. I, I'm going to review uh, some of the literature on uh, the relationship between uh, youth bulges or age structure transitions and, and conflict and, uh, and um, instability, uh, and focus on how education uh, can, can be a uh, mediator in this relationship which is based on a paper uh, I've done uh, together with Bilal Barakat uh, for um, the World Bank, and which we are updating now uh, for uh, wider. And then um, make some uh, brief comments on, on the, uh, so some of the extensions here that we're working on in a, in a new PRIO uh, project in collaboration with the African School of Economics in Benin uh, on uh, so the broader demographic dividends, and this also ties, uh, tie, uh, ties nicely into the, some of the comments made by uh, the commissioner uh, this morning about, um, about youth as, uh, as um, an asset and a partner in uh, long-term peace building. So um, for those of you who follow um, some of the uh, of the discussions in the in the demographic uh, sort of political demography uh, field, there is now extensive focus on some of these mega trends and and the the impact these will have uh, fundamentally on development uh, and and also political and, and security domains, uh, where we see both uh, shifting demographic weights globally, uh, adding to the shifting geopolitics that we're seeing. Uh, we're seeing population aging in the global north, and uh, perhaps more importantly, uh, so both for, for security and development, age structure transitions in the global south happening at very different uh, pace. Uh, we're also seeing rapid uh, urbanization, and while that is uh, an interesting uh, and important, and I think to some extent neglected uh, area, also in the, uh, in the security field, uh, my focus here is going to be on the age structure transitions uh, in the global south. Uh, we heard this morning um, that, that we're now seeing the largest uh, youth populations um, that had been um, observed historically. That's true. If you look at the solid line, that's the number of youth, and uh, we're now at around 1.2 billion youth uh, between the ages of 15 and 24. Uh, that is uh, in going to increase somewhat over the next uh, decades, but not a whole lot. So we've reached a sort of a, a bit of a plateau. Uh, but if you look at the dotted line, the, the peak youth, if you want, in relative terms, uh, was actually back in the mid-1970s. Uh, this is the proportion of youth uh, as, so between 15 and 24 as a proportion of uh, 15 years plus. Um, so uh, we are seeing uh, youth uh, in most region uh, declining as a proportion of the adult uh, population. But as you can imagine, this is looking very differently uh, across the globe. Uh, this is what we then define as, as youth bulges. And as you can see with uh, the, the European line at the bottom, the light blue, uh, we're now uh, well below 15% of the population, adult population being uh, 15 to 24 year olds. While uh, we've seen very significant declines in, uh, in Asia, and uh, it says North Africa, but should be North Africa in the Middle East. Uh, and we've seen some of the most spectacular declines in uh, many Middle Eastern countries, like uh, Iran, that since the early 1990s uh, have moved, had gone from, from having 5.5 uh, children per woman, uh, now down to less than two. Uh, and there are in, in many uh, Arab countries and, and other Middle Eastern countries uh, similar um, declines in fertility. Similarly with, with Asian countries, and of course East Asia is, is a well-known case, but there are also other spectacular declines in fertility that, uh, that uh, results in these um, declines overall in uh, youth bulges. And uh, the region um, that, that is uh, somewhat behind in their demographic uh, transition is Sub-Saharan Africa, where fertility is uh, still high in many countries, but where we are seeing uh, now fertility coming down uh, also on this continent, and the expectation is that this will likely continue, uh, but of course with considerable 
uncertainties. So what do we know uh, about youth bulges and uh, instability? Um, arguably, uh, large youth bulges can be associated both with increased motives uh, for conflict, associated with um, grievances over uh, lack of, uh, of uh, access to education, to political participation, uh, and, uh, and uh, to employment, uh, not least, an outcome. Uh, but also opportunity for conflict in the sense that they're depressing the cost of conflict. So uh, youth generally have low opportunity cost, uh, and, and that is something that, that generally facilitates for recruitment, uh, and, and particularly in uh, settings with, uh, with low uh, levels of education and, uh, and low uh, opportunities in the labor market. Uh, and then you, on top of that, have the what, what uh, uh, demographic... Uh, um, uh, political demographers re refer to as relative cohort size effects, where uh, you have uh, an increased pressure, especially on ma uh, wage, uh, male wages in, in societies with uh, large and increasing uh, youth populations. There are a number of studies that, uh, that have looked at the, uh, the relationship between um, armed conflict uh, or youth bulges and armed conflict, and, and the study that I did back in 2006 found very uh, clear and strong effects of, uh, of increased uh, risk of armed conflict onset of, of youth bulges. Weber, uh, back in, in 2010, uh, did a study showing that uh, greater polit uh, political instability was, uh, was a result of, uh, of um, uh, these age structure transitions. Uh, Norgals and Davenport uh, report in a study uh, on uh, government repression, that, uh, that governments respond with higher levels of, uh, of repression in the face of uh, youth bulges. Um, and, and interestingly, and I'll, I'll build on, on this a little bit, um, there seems to be um, an effect, um, the, the, the effect of, of large youth bulges seems to be something that is primarily identified in high fertility contexts, meaning in the early phases of the demographic uh, transition or the second demographic transition from, from high to low fertility. And this indicates uh, that um, um, the, um, uh, the, the, when, when states and societies are moving from high fertility to low fertility context, it means that there is an opening for uh, what we often refer to as uh, the demographic dividend or uh, the demographic bonus. Um, and, and this is where we segue into the issue of, of Precisely, when can we when can we draw on these enormous resources that youth represent in society, moving from uh, from youth being seen as a risk factor uh, to uh, a, a question about how we may be able to realize uh, the demographic dividend, and um, the, uh, the the sort of core idea uh, behind the, the demographic dividend, which uh, which has been empirically. Uh, observed in uh, in uh, the Asian uh, tiger economies primarily, and, and, and was first sort of identified there as a as a significant uh, factor. Then uh, having estimated or being estimated to have contributed roughly to a third of the economic growth of the uh, of the uh, tiger economies growth in the 1970s, 1980s, and, and early 90s. Um, the the core idea is that uh, declining dependency ratio. So the fewer uh, depends as a result of decreasing um, fertility, both leads to increasing labor supply when the, uh, the, the prior um, large youth, uh, or the, the, the young cohorts then grow up to become uh, part of the labor um, uh, supply, and then investments can be shifted away from schooling and healthcare in the uh, sort of high fertility, from the high fertility uh, setting. Um, obviously, this is dependent on uh, and, and conditional on the labor market and on human uh, capital investments. So this is often referred to as uh, a demographic window of opportunity. It's not; it doesn't have to be realized, but uh, it depends on uh, on uh, these uh, conditional uh, factors, where education is uh, one of them. Uh, the the sort of the the, the classical. Um, uh, so demographic situation is, is the one of South Korea, and here you will see that the blue line is the, the youth bulges in, in South Korea going back to 1950, uh, starting to decline uh, already in the, uh, the early 1980s. Um, and at the same time as the, uh, the support ratio, which is the, the opposite of the dependency ratio, so the number of uh, supporters, uh, meaning those between the ages of 15 and 64 in the population per dependent under 15 and, and over 64. 
Um, uh, so as, as, as the fertility is declining, uh, support ratio is increasing, and, and South Korea uh, is now at a level with uh, more than two and a half uh, supporters per dependent. It will decline uh, rapidly in, in South Korea in the years to come, uh, but this is the, sort of the, the ideal scenario for a demographic window of opportunity. If we're looking at support ratios uh, worldwide, we can see that, that uh, the, the areas that are currently seeing the, the highest um, support ratios uh, are Asia and, uh, and also uh, Latin America, uh, with, with the latter largely uh, seen as, as having not been able to take advantage of, uh, of their uh, demographic window of opportunity, while uh, Sub-Saharan Africa is still uh, as, as a region, uh, just uh, a little bit above uh, one to one uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, support to dependents. So uh, it's a very different. It's a very different, uh, and uh, and uh, sort of in the uh, in the next decade to come, uh, still very low uh, support ratios uh, in most sub-Saharan African countries. On um, education. Um, to, uh, so which, which was the, so the basis for the, the paper uh, that, uh, that we did uh, for the World Bank. We're looking into the potential mediating role of, uh, of uh, education uh, as a factor that increases economic opportunities in society for, uh, for youth bulges, and again contingent on the, on the labor market uh, and, uh, and economic uh, opportunities more broadly. Um, there have also been concerns uh, from, from the perspective of, uh, of uh, sort of security uh, conflict uh, analysis that if you increase uh, education, access to education, especially secondary and, and tertiary education too rapidly, that might um, contribute to expand also expectations and, and that unmet expectations can, can backfire in the sense of also increasing potential for uh, for um, uh, instability as a result of that. And there has been some concerns, obviously, uh, over the relevance and quality of education, which isn't easily uh, measurable in, in the data that we are using, uh, which is uh, data from the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis in, in Vienna, which uh, has some extremely nice and useful back projections on cohorts and gender uh, going back to, to 1970 for uh, 120 countries. And we also use this to uh, to project forward. Um, if uh, just very briefly looking at, uh, at we, our, our main focus is, uh, is on male secondary uh, education uh, because this has been the, sort of the primary, uh, primary focus area, but we're also uh, interested in, in looking at uh, gender parity in, uh, uh, and in education. I'll return to that uh, briefly. Um, but, uh, but as, uh, as this graph shows, uh, if you're looking at, uh, at um, male secondary education in many of the fragile contexts that we're studying, uh, the uh, level of, uh, of education is still low, um, even though there has been progress since, uh, certainly since 2000. But, uh, but um, this, is, this is one of the major concerns when it comes to, uh, to the, the mediating effect uh, in, in, low, uh, in high fragile uh, contexts. Um, the interesting um, uh, sort of use, the usefulness of, of this data is also that you can, in the, in the projections, uh, consider the, the um, reciprocal effect of education on, uh, on population development. These are two population pyramids for uh, Niger uh, in 2050, um, showing uh, the um, impact uh, of, of education, both in terms of, uh, of uh, um, qualifying uh, the coming generations, uh, with uh, yellow here being uh, primary education, red uh, being um, uh, no education, uh, and blue being uh, secondary and, and dark blue tertiary education. So not only is, is a Niger, we're in the, the bottom uh, version of, of the Niger population in, in 2050, uh, following a fast track scenario, uh, one that is much more educated, it's also a much smaller population as a result of, edu of education feeding back into lower fertility. So what we find in this study is that uh, there, the provision of male secondary education is uh, significantly reducing conflict, indeed, 
uh, the effect of youth bulges is restricted to low education domains uh, and youth bulges uh, and, and low education uh, are uh, the interaction of, of uh, youth bulges and low education is, is particularly strong in, in low and middle income countries. We're also seeing that rapid expansions in education do not elevate uh, risks, which, uh, which has been a major concern. And again, that gender parity in education uh, is actually something that lowers risk and net of the effect of uh, male education on, on, uh, on this relationship. Finally, um, just a, a couple of words on where we're going from here. Uh, would the, the, uh, the collaboration that we have now with the African School of Economics looking into um, ways that uh, states and, and particularly states in Sub-Saharan Africa can position themselves for the demographic window of opportunity that will arise over the decades to come uh, and in particular understanding the effects of, of education on, on realizing dividends, uh, looking both at, uh, at social, political uh, and economic dividends uh, such as uh, the, the potential um, driver of uh, youth as, as drivers of, uh, of uh, changing norms and, and uh, uh, attitudes regarding social inclusion on the continent, um, the forms of political participation uh, and inclusion, uh, and also uh, the impact of human capital uh, expansion uh, to youth inclusion in the uh, economy in Sub-Saharan Africa. So on that note, I see my time is uh, out. Thank you very much.